describe the urgent need for action to protect Minnesota children and teens online. I'm delighted to welcome you on behalf of the Kids Code Coalition. Um, my name is Marjorie Connolly, and I'm the Communications Director for the Tech Oversight Project, one of the coalition's members, and I'll be moderating this call. I'm going to start recording the call now. If you object to this recording, please disconnect. I want to go over the format. Um, first, we'll hear brief remarks from the bill's sponsors, Senator Aaron May Quaid and Representative Kristen Bonner, uh, each of whom has been a powerful and outspoken advocate for protecting kids online in Minnesota. Uh, then we're proud and excited to introduce two members of the broad coalition supporting this bill in Minnesota, representing organizations that do crucial work with young people across the state who will be sharing their perspectives on why the time is now for Minnesota to lead the way in protecting children and teens in the digital world. We'll also hear from a legal expert about how this bill has been strengthened um, as we head back into session, and then there will be an opportunity for Q&A with members of the media. Um, we'll get to the details of that when the time is right, but if you already know you have a question, feel free to raise a hand or type a question mark in the chat and we will get to you um, during Q&A. Before we start off, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the moment that we're in. After families from Minnesota and across the country went to DC last week to stand up in the memory of young people whose tragic losses were tied to social media. And also to rec recognize the fact that Minnesota's Attorney General released a report last week documenting evidence that emerging technologies are having a negative impact on young Minnesotans and detailing specific product design choices that facilitate these negative consequences, which are exactly the kind of structural issues that this legislation is designed to and seeks to address. As a coalition, we're appreciative of how far we've come to date with support from parents, young people, and organizations from all across the state and especially from people on this call as we continue engaging in the legislative process to make this the best and most effective bill possible to safeguard the safety and privacy of Minnesota's youth. Now to start us off, I'm delighted to introduce the sponsor of the Minnesota Kids Code in the Senate, Senator Aaron May Quaid, to share a few words. There is a silver lining is that Minnesota does not need to wait on Congress to act and there are vetted regulatory frameworks that are proven to work and that is the age appropriate design code or the kids code. At its core, Senate file 2018 is simple. It requires that businesses gather only the personal data of children that is required to provide a service to, that a child has requested and prohibits the further use or sale of that data. Unlike other bills that we have seen related to online safety for youth and children, this doesn't seek to moderate content on the internet, but rather get to protecting children while they're in the internet from companies using their data to push them towards harmful content, to sell and um, do harmful things. That is where the harm is coming from. So instead of protecting children from the internet, we can protect them in it by making sure tech companies are acting responsibly with their data. Um, I am so grateful for the large coalition that has come around both this bill and this effort, including my co-sponsor uh, in the House, Representative Bonner, and all of the, the folks that you see here today, including youth who are getting behind this movement, because right now we have left the um, safety of youth online to be sent out to parents, right? It's on the parents, it's the individual responsibility of the parents when really it is on tech companies, it is on leaders like myself in the Senate and Representative Bonner and the House and the government to make sure that it is safe for children to be online no matter where they live. Um, and with that, I will give it back to Marjorie. Thank you so much for being with us today.
I will turn it over to Representative Kristen Bonner, the sponsor of the bill in the House. of Maple Grove, Minnesota. Um, and specifically, I come to you today also through the lens of a 30 plus year veteran of the IT world. And specifically, I work with teams who actually create the software. I literally know how it's made. And I can tell you, we are on the precipice of a really incredible time. You know, we've seen the, the uh, hearings before Congress and talking to social media leaders to, um, to the leaders who are building these products and understanding in a fundamental way that for far too long we have allowed these harms to persist. But here's the good news. We absolutely positively can create better, safer products online by design and by default. It is possible, but we're not gonna do it in a way that we're gonna legalize it away, or we're gonna make it so that parents and grandparents need to become tech experts or figure out which button to push or which, which lever to allow. I don't think that's fair to do to parents. And it really allows us in a way to say, to push back on the folks who are producing these products to apply a lens of child safety in the way that they do any other risk assessment as they develop their products at a time when it makes the most sense when you are designing the product to make sure that we handle that risk before the harm can be done to those children. We can absolutely build better, safer products. We just have to have the will to do it. And across the spectrum, we will see parents, it does not matter if you are red, blue, conservative, um, independent, it does not matter. Parents and grandparents across the spectrum are all in on saying it is high time, it is past time that we take care of our kids. We really have to meet this time and moment, take accountability for it, to make sure that we are holding social media companies accountable for it. We can absolutely do this. This is without a doubt the best solution out there in the country right now. Uh, to make sure that we address this need for businesses at a time when it makes sense in the design process. But more importantly, we are at a time where we can also create the best potential solution for children, for parents, and for grandparents. We can build better, safer products by design, and that is exactly what this bill is intended to do. And it is why I am confident as an IT professional coming to the table that this is the best solution in the country right now. Um, and that perspective, um, now to hear a perspective from um, Save Suicide Awareness Voices of Education, I'd like to introduce Eric Mishy. Thank you for everybody for being here. I was 12 years old when I took my first drag of a cigarette. Little did I know then that this seemingly innocuous act would spiral into a 25 year long battle with tobacco addiction. Cigarette and tobacco companies with their stack calculated strategy of addiction by design ensnared me and millions of others. They deliberately kept us hooked while spending a fortune to oppose policies that would save lives. Fast forward today and we face a new breed of addiction peddling. Social media companies that created platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Discord, YouTube, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok and others are the cigarette and tobacco companies of our children's generation. Cigarettes and tobaccos have little redeeming social value. Social media does, and it can, but what value it has is being undermined by the harm that it can and does do. Social media companies dismiss the mounting evidence linking their platforms to deteriorating mental health and suicide among our youth. They deflect responsibility by offering hollow promises of content moderation and public relations gimmicks like grading systems. The real cure lies in designing platforms that are safe for kids, which is why the Minnesota Kids Code is needed today. Before 2008, the suicide rate for young people was declining. And then in 2008 through 2018, the suicide rate among 13 and 14 year olds more than doubled from roughly two deaths per 100,000 teens in 2008 to five per 200,000 a decade later. Suicide is now the leading cause of death for 13 and 14 year olds in the United States. From 2006 through 2015, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram, Snapchat, and Discord became public social media platforms. Coincidence? Where there's smoke, there's fire. 42 states attorney general saw the smoke and sued Facebook, now Meta, for its deceptive practices and the undeniable harm it's inflicted on our kids. And here in Minnesota, we have an opportunity to lead the charge protecting our kids. The Minnesota Kids Act, Kids Code, is a crucial step towards ensuring the social media companies prioritize the safety and well-being of our kids over profit margins. This legislation doesn't stifle free speech or compromise privacy. It doesn't block kids from experiencing the positive benefits of social media. It simply demands accountability from those who profit from our kids' misery. Like big tobacco before them, big tech's day of reckoning is at hand. Social media companies have claimed they are doing their best to protect kids' health and well-being. The Senate hearing last week showed that they aren't. They're doing their best to profit from them. And it's now time for us to do our best and pass the Minnesota Kids Act. Thank you. Introduce the co-founder of the Spark and Stitch Institute in Minneapolis, Aaron Walsh. mission has always been to maximize the benefits and minimize the harms of media's impact on child and adolescent health and development. I think we're all aware that the widespread use of technology by kids and teens has raised critical concerns about its impact on their mental health, on their development, and on their safety. And everyone in this room knows that we are experiencing an epidemic of depression, anxiety, and loneliness. The reality is that the relationship between technology use, use and mental health for any individual child is indeed complicated. Uh, yet tech executives and lobbyists citing inconclusive evidence is an insidious dodge of responsibility at this point. And it actually distracts us from the question in front of lawmakers today. Lawmakers can ensure that websites and apps are safer for kids by design. We actually have all the evidence we need for that. Research is also quite clear that manipulative design features are at odds with the developmental needs of kids and teens. Current design encourages compulsive behavior. It captures and sells private data. It nudges users into risky behaviors and allows unknown users to contact children. The data that companies collect on kids drives algorithms that, kids, that put kids directly in harm's way. Um, we see now that platforms have prioritized their bottom lines over protection from internally documented harms. Um, as others have noted, I work with families and young people across the state, and they are tired. The entire burden of protection has been placed on them, which is not just unfair, it actually amplifies inequities and risk exposure across our state. Children are not many adults. <laughs> Indeed, we talk about childhood and adolescence um, as being these windows of opportunity and windows of sensitivity. And it's time to tell tech companies that they can no longer ignore the specific needs and the very specific vulnerabilities of their youngest users. I believe that the state of Minnesota is currently in a window of opportunity as well. The Minnesota Kids Code allows us to get upstream from online harms. Um, I'm ready to ask our lawmakers to lead the nation in ensuring that kids' online experiences are positive, safe, and private. Uh, we cannot leave this job up to tech companies. It is their job to make money, and it's our lawmakers' job to protect children and youth. This content-neutral, design-focused bill represents a crucial step forward in protecting Minnesota children and adolescents from the risks of technology, while importantly, ensuring that they have continued access to the many benefits and protections that technology can afford when designed with their developmental needs in mind. Um, and deeds our kids' uh, health, development, and well-being depends on it. Thanks, everybody. Um, now, uh, to close out the speaking portion of today's program, I'm delighted to introduce Nicole Rocha of Five Rights U.S. 
Thank you, Marjorie. Five Rights US is a project in cooperation between Reset Tech and the Five Rights Foundation. And we focus on educating US stakeholders about international best practices for age appropriate design. As you've heard today, research shows that the mental health crisis affecting our youth has been deeply exacerbated by the presence of data-driven advertising to children and the use of psychologically manipulative design features intending to prolong time spent online to which children and teens are particularly vulnerable, which is why we are so thankful to Senator May Quaid and Representative Bonner for championing a proven vetted regulatory framework to address these issues, the Minnesota Kids Code. The Kids Code does not require any form of content moderation and does not infringe on parents' rights to raise their children. At the same time, it does not place the onus on parents to monitor their kids' every online interaction. And importantly, it does not limit the information, opportunities, or resources available to youth on the internet. Despite NetChoice, a trade association representing Amazon, Google, Meta, and TikTok, among many, many others, suing to enjoin the kids' code in the state, numerous states, including Minnesota, are moving forward with design code, design code bills, and it's already law overseas showing that businesses can comply. We have worked carefully over the interim to make important changes to last year's bill. These changes maintain the principles of strong data privacy by default and safety by design, but incorporate language to make the bill more defensible from legal attack. In summary, these amendments define the best interests of children using harms recognized by US courts for decades from tort and discrimination law. It specifically calls out financial harm, material physical harm, severe emotional distress, and discrimination based on protected classes. So businesses cannot create online platforms that infringe on any of those rights. Entities are no longer required to enforce published terms of service, policies, or community standards. And while this may seem counterintuitive, that is federal law. And so we've struck that from, from the bill. We've also made careful changes to the data protection impact assessment portion of the of the bill to ensure that it is not a form of content moderation and it only um, asks people to look at their data management practices. In fact, we've stricken the reference of content from the bill entirely, except to clarify that it cannot be construed to limit a minor's ability to search for specific content online. And we also add Significant language to ensure that the bill does not interfere with existing rights and privileges of children. We ensure that there is no requirement for age assurance. And even if a company decides to estimate age, they must do so in a privacy protective manner. In short, this is a reasonable vetted bill that walks the line between online privacy and safety in a manner that will actually benefit kids and keep the internet available to all. Thank you. For those insights. Um, now I'm really excited to invite members of the media who, who have questions um, for, for any of our speakers, our sponsors, um, to go ahead and raise a hand or type in the chat and we will, we will make sure you get to ask your question. Start Tribune, thanks for pulling this and answering your questions. I, I'm, it seems like this is moving obviously away from the, some of the algorithm restrictions we've seen in other bills, but I'm I'm curious about how, like enforcement, how um, social media companies are gonna have to change their data collection and software um, on, on pieces. Is it on pieces they've already designed? Would they have to go back and change some of the software? Is it on things they design going forward? Um, just curious how that would work. we really are making sure that we are building those products from the outset that they before they actually make it into the marketplace that they have already done that impact assessment to make sure that they're, they're mitigating risks to children um certainly at some point in time we would like to make sure that folks are actually actively looking at their current products as well um, and making sure that they are mitigating those harms um, i think it's very clear that there are features and functionality that we allow in software products today 
that are not in the best interest of children. And I think it, it's fairly obvious to most parents and most folks that the, this is the case, right? We allow things in a virtual world we would never allow in a physical world. Uh, for example, we would never send our 13-year-old to the mall and say, you know, that kind of sketchy looking guy in the corner of the food court, go ahead and chat with him. He's like 60 years old, but don't worry about it, sweetie. You'll be fine. No, we don't say that. No parent in their right mind would think that was acceptable. Acceptable, but we allow that sort of thing online, right? 60-year-olds uh, should not be texting 13-year-olds. This is highly inappropriate. And I think we all know that. So there are certainly features that will have to be evaluated for their safety and efficacy and mitigate those risks. And certainly that might be one example, but there are many others of addictive features and functionality that have to be evaluated. And this is no different, by the way, than any other risk assessment to a product. The difference here is that we are applying a lens of child safety and saying it is time that we catch up with the rest of the world. We do this for cars. We do this for car seats. We do this for every other physical product in the world. We simply have not done it for online safety. And it is time that we get to that place. And we are at a unique uh, point in time when not only do we have the tools to do this, we have engineers who are very smart and very dedicated who actually want to do the right thing, the folks building these products. But unfortunately, we are in a place in time where if com large companies will not act in the best interest of children, that is where legislators must step in and actually take the reins to ensure that they do the right thing. I wonder if you could speak to to how the the how this legislative text would affect already existing products. Impact assessment before it's released to the public in order to get the the benefit and the limited liability of the 90 day right to cure. For legacy products or products that are already in existence, we've set up a system where it's the same way. So the bill is enforced by the state's attorney general and for businesses that are in substantial compliance with the requirements of the code, they um, are entitled to receive notice from the attorney general and then 90 days to correct their product. And this is because the the goal of the legislation is compliance and keeping our kids safe and and it's not punitive in nature and so we've we've set it up that way um, and there's definitely a distinction between products that are in the marketplace right now which folks will get a little bit more time to complete their impact assessments for and mitigate risks of harm um, but for new products moving forward they will have to do that before they're released to the public uh, I see we have a question from Shannon with Senate Media Services. Uh, the process question for the lawmakers, um, when will the new language be available? And um, in the Senate, is judiciary next? And have you talked with Senator Latz and in the House? Kind of what is the path there? And is there some consensus about the importance of this among lawmakers? In the Data Practices Commission, the Commission on Data Practices. Um, so it is available. Um, and the next step for it in the Minnesota Senate would be in the Judiciary Committee. Um, we've had a lot of conversations in the Minnesota Senate, not just on the DFL side, but with GOP senators as well. There is broad bipartisan um, understanding that this is a problem that needs to be tackled. Um, it, Senator Lucero is, is a co-author on this bill um, and has worked really diligently alongside me in the Senate um, on this topic. So uh, we are moving forward. The language is available for folks to see and we've had really good feedback on it so far. active and live. Um, as uh, Senator May Quaid mentioned, the uh, amendment has already been drafted and it is ready to go. So as soon as we can get a hearing, and we are hoping for that to be early in session to get this off and running, um, that we will start hearing that bill and uh, make the necessary amendments, uh, some of which uh, uh, Ms. Rocha already referred, referred to earlier here. Um, but what 
I want to underscore is that the amendment that we're bringing forward is really a brilliant way for us to make sure that this bill is as strong as it possibly can be, to withstand legal challenges, to meet the challenges head on that we've heard, and to say we are we are ready. We are ready to tackle this. We are ready to be of uh, the defenders for all of those parents and grandparents who are frustrated, who are exhausted, trying to tackle becoming tech experts for their children. Um, and really to say, we want you to be able to enjoy online products and have the benefits of them, but we want you, your children to be able to do so in a safe and appropriate manner. time for one more question if any members of the media still have a question they'd like to ask. Well, I, it sounds like this would be possibly nation leading, but maybe a few other states are, are simultaneously also carrying similar legislation. I don't know if anyone can give me the sort of, would this be, you know, a first of its kind if it's passed? And, and also, are there some other states? doing looking into something similar the the, the kids code has been uh, introduced in california and you know the one challenge of being first is always that it's a little bit difficult uh to to do those things now the amendment that you'll see coming forward addresses some of the current concerns that came out of california so i will say it is the best of breed in the country right now um and yes there are most definitely other states looking at this and you know because i work in the tech industry i understand that what's in the best interest of tech to level the playing field is that we have the same set of rules of the road in each and every state, right? So I have been an active part of making sure that 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 is that that we have consistency across states that we can actually make it make sense for all those folks and not only that we want the strongest possible code for parents and for kids in every state in the nation and i think we, they deserve that but certainly we are in a unique position where i have a really great partner in senator may quaid who is this brilliant legal mind right and of course you have me on the tech side um and it, it is really a combination made in heaven uh for this bill and I think what it says is that we have an opportunity in Minnesota to have the best bill in the nation for businesses, for kids, for parents, and to really lead the way on this piece of legislation and make sure that we can spread this good word and this good work across the country. the love and I I share uh, the feeling on having just a stellar partner who is so knowledgeable in this. The other thing I'll add to is that we've seen a lot of different kinds of bills in states to get at this problem, right? We've seen states ban minors from using TikTok. We've seen some states just introduce legislation that would prevent anybody under the age, age of 18 from using social media. We have uh, bills in federal Congress that would try to like regulate content on the internet. We know that this is the best way to go about keeping kids safe in the internet. And we all, when we sign onto websites, we have to accept or reject cookies. That's one law that was passed in the state of California. And so Minnesota, like many other things, is poised to lead in the area of both protecting people, young people in particular, online and making sure that we are protecting free speech and content that can be out there, the benefits of social media and the benefits of tech as well. So we are really proud to be leading in this space and uh, look forward to being recognized as a leader nationally. Senator and Representative, um, I, I couldn't think of a better note to end on for now. Um, we're looking forward to, to staying in touch as this effort progresses. We'll be sure to keep uh, members of the media informed, but I wanna say thank you to our sponsors, members of the coalition and members of the media who joined us today. Thanks so much.